good evening one and all and once again welcome to the video this essentially video i'll be essentially explaining and reading my article that i have just posted on my linkedin this article is essentially about fully automated data ingestion pipeline which is completely serverless uh, this pipeline is developed essentially to ingest data to elastic search it currently ingests about 1.2 whopping terabyte worth of data uh, we use uh, essentially aws step functions and lambdas to do all the heavy lifting and of course firehose to uh, pump the data up to the firehose this video essentially i'll be going over the architecture diagram explanation and some of the challenges we have encountered during or, or working during this project so let's get started so i would like I would like to introduce you to the team members first. Uh, let me try to make my image small so that doesn't block your view and I'll put it up, okay? So uh, for people who don't know me, hi guys, my name is Somil Shah. I own a, a bachelor's in electronic engineering and a double master's in electrical and computer engineering. I have extensive ex expertise working with uh, distributed systems, have been, de have been working with AWS, such as Lambda, SQS, Batch, EventBridge, and much, much more. I essentially have worked in creating data lakes, essentially lake that is currently storing about more than three to four terabyte of data, partitioning the lake, right? All those stuff I have worked on that. Then I would like to um, also say, if you are interested, you can come and read more about Batch Framework and internal data ingestion framework that processes one terabyte of data in a month and runs 200 jobs. Here is the complete link. If you want to read how we got 50 times faster speed uh, in the data lake query on, on the Athena, there is the article. And we have optimization, essentially a case study of how we got 50 times faster queries on Elasticsearch. So that article is also uh, posted here, right? So all, all of these articles are posted, so do check that out. The second member I would like to introduce in this video is Birindra Singh. Uh, Birindra Singh uh, is, um, has completed his bachelor's in electronic and he loves working on Elasticsearch. He, he is a fantastic guy. He has done a lot of work on Elk. Then Mr. Hariyom Dubey is a Python developer. He has, he has completed his master's in computer application, has five years of experience developing software application using Python, Django, and so on. So we regularly receive many files. Uh, we receive about 7,800 GZ files, right? These GZ files essentially, each GZ file has about 1,000 to 10,000 items. Now, uh, previously, traditionally, we essentially have a huge Python code base that reads the file one by one. For each file, it downloads in the current directory, then it reads the file, processes the file, and makes a request to the Elasticsearch. Now, as you can see, 7,800 files and 90,000 items in one file how it's going to take forever right so as you can see this process was very manual and it takes a long time right so this ingestion takes about five to seven days and we wanted to get things done faster which is why me and my team designed a fully serverless solution using step functions that can reduce the time from seven days to seven hours so the tech spec is essentially step functions lambda firehose data stream open search api gateway s3 why we opted for serverless? Because serverless is a cloud native design that allows to delegate more of your operational tasks to AWS, resulting in increased agility and creativity. Serverless computing allows you to create, execute apps and services without worrying about servers. So we don't want to worry about servers and infrastructure. We want to focus upon the application. Let's highlight the architecture here in a, in a, in a second on why we have decided uh, this particular way. So the user essentially starts the pipeline with a simple JSON. The user pass the metadata and the information in the JSON. That JSON is passed to the step function, which I'll cover in a short, as you can see. So on a high level, it invokes a step function, which orchestrate number of steps. Uh, these steps essentially processes the files and then after processing is done, it does a, a bulk upload on the Kinesis data stream. Data stream is connected to the Firehose and then essentially Firehose is connected to the open search. Any failed document goes back to the S3, so that way we could essentially reload the failed documents from the data lake. Every single file that is processed is also dumped on the S3 as a metadata. So essentially we have the file name, the status, success, failed in progress, or, and the time at which it was done. So we have a metadata. We run the glue crawler on the top of that so that we could query this metadata using Athena, which allows us to query the metadata using a standard SQL. 
we have a beautiful dashboard bi dashboard that is built essentially built using aws quick site which allows us to see okay which file has been processed which file has failed what's the throughput everything on a beautiful dashboard right so as you can see the step functions i am not going to go into the theory reading part but i'm going to explain you so on a high level we essentially the step function validates a json right if the json is not valid we essentially branch to an error state where essentially uh, an sn uh, where we publish a message to the sns and people are notified that the pipeline has failed once the json comes in and the json is valid we essentially take the metadata and the prefix of the s3 and we verify by taking some sample files from that particular uh, prefix because we want to validate that the prefix provided is actually valid right so we do that validation and if it validation fails we essentially navigate to the error state once the validation is complete the next state uh, is essentially a lambda function that is responsible to check the memory the space and has to create mapping on the elastic search so once all this specification and everything is verified we essentially create the mapping we check with uh, we check the specs for example do we have space everything is okay uh, so all that logic is baked into the lambda and then essentially we create the mapping important thing to note is we don't store the mapping in the code we store the mapping in an s3 file so essentially when we want to tweak we essentially go and tweak the s3 file we don't want to we want to make things very generalized and uh, essentially if you have sufficient space and the mapping has been created we start fetching the keys from s3 now this is a very important step because at this point we essentially check the metadata on the s3 hey do you have these files processed if you have all these files processed don't further process it so here the logic comes where we don't want to process files which we have already processed so this essentially ensures that we only process unique files okay because every file we process we store the metadata and um, we only process the unique files down here we have a map item essentially this is the one that processes a json file we use pandas layers there we have a datadog layers as well and logging libraries so all the logs is stored all the logs and everything is stored in a very nice way into the datadog so we could essentially see there see alertings and all of that once the file processing is complete irrespective whether it was success or fail it's going to publish to the sqs now since the file is processed to the sqs the lambdas are going to pull and take the file now they are going to update the metadata that is the s3 essentially with essentially whether the file is in progress failed this that as you can see from the architecture diagram right all the metadata is stored in the s3 uh so as you can see right with step function it allows us to have each essentially step we can define retry blocks which means if a particular file processing is failed we can maximum try for three times and we can also back off and and define how how many times you want to try so all these amazing beautiful things step function allows us to or orchestrate the workflow as you can see here um as you can see the main challenge is here, here is we are firing about 10 to 15 lambdas we tried with um, 200 lambdas and soon we realized we can even fire 1000 lambdas but the problem is not processing the file the problem is ingesting the file into elastic search via firewalls and data stream because there is a limit to uh, of number of files that you can publish to firewalls which i'll cover in a second which is why we had to set a reserved concurrency and downscale the file processing right we we do we can do uh, massive file processing but just because the firewalls limitation as you can see here uh, bytes per second was capped we have a, 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 a firewalls has a limit right uh, on how much data you can publish per second um so as you can see you know uh, for us uh, for us east north virginia and west oregon and europe that is uh, units stands 100000 in life so 5 lakh records per second and 2000 requests per second and 5 megabits per second so here are all the limitation of the firewalls which is why we had to bring down the lambda concurrency to 15 or 10 because as i said we could easily process more but the there are challenges on the firewall side so you know as you can see here are the graphs uh, essentially the records delivered to open search right about 800000 records uh, per 5 minute this is a sum graph of that then uh, we also did lambda power tuning essentially we want to essentially uh, put the right amount of compute to a lambda right we don't want to over allocate it neither we do want to under allocate it so power tuning allow us to essentially allocate the best amount of resource the right amount of resource to the lambda function as you can see this is a, a a screenshot taken from kibana dashboard which shows the record count uh, 57 million 
uh, this was when I was, you know, writing the article. I took a screenshot, right? And this number is about 89 to 100 million. As you can see, nearly about 1.2 terabyte of worth of data. Uh, so, you know, we have optimized all these things and we, we, we have made sure the queries are very, very fast and performant. Uh, but if you want to learn about more about step function, I have all these tutorials for you right from beginner from zero to hero. You can learn everything about step function. All the tutorials are there. But in, in addition, if you have any other questions regarding this article, you can post it in the comment and we can uh, when I get time, I'll try my best to help you out with your questions. With that being said, a small like would be much more appreciated. And I do love to connect with everyone during my free, free time on weekends. So please send me, um, you know, messages and email and I would love to connect and talk to you more about what you have been doing. And if you have problems and trouble, I'm more than happy to suggest my expertise during my free time at free of cost. Right. I do not charge for anything uh, for, for, for these. Right. So during my free time, if I am free, I'll help you out. OK. Uh, with that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching. I, I, I hope you have enjoyed this small walkthrough of my article and the project. And if you have any additional questions, I would love to uh, answer your questions. Uh, so please leave your question in the chat or the comment box. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the upcoming next video. Keep smiling, keep programming, stay safe. See you guys next time.